Uh, good afternoon. Thank you for inviting me. And sorry for my Spanglish. Uh, by the way, congratulations to you all for your English. It was amazing. Um, well, I have this uh, presentation called uh, like this, Nonsense City. And it's, uh, as we are with some museum managers, it's like a proposal for an, uh, an, an exhibition okay, on the city, which could be in, in, a, in a museum. Uh, I call it Nonsense City because I, I think that our cities are quite a, a, a mess, and, but I think that they could be uh, much better. Uh, and that is why that is because um, our urban planning, uh, our current urban planning, um, avoids us having the city uh, we need. So uh, I have uh, six uh, issues, six ideas to share with you that could uh, be useful to improve them, and that they arise uh, in trying to to answer to this uh, question. They arise uh, from uh, six senses I have learned about while preparing this lecture, which are not the typical ones, those who are based on a particular organ, but uh, different ones that uh, come from, uh, capacities that come from our body. The first one is chronoception, which is the, uh, the ability of uh, perceive the passage of time, and which is really important in our, lands, in our urban scapes because um, uh, it's uh, related to memory. Uh, let me show you two examples of museum in Barcelona, which are one next to the other in the Raval neighborhood. The first one is the MAGBA, the Museum of Contemporary Art in Barcelona, which is a star architect um, work that made tabula rasa in this neighborhood. It, it in, uh, needed a, a big hole, demolition of lots of uh, buildings to, to appear, like an UFO. And this is another one, the one in, Carlo, in which Carlos and me are working in, which is the Center for Contemporary Culture, which is recycling uh, pre-existence. So this is a lesson we should be uh, uh, addressing the city as something uh, that should be recycled bef before then sprawling it uh, on the landscape. And this, uh, for example, uh, today we are in a neophilic uh, uh, way of addressing uh, the city, we always want new things. Uh, we like innovation or smart cities, but uh, smart cities are not wise. The wise way of addressing city is understanding that the city of the future is already built up. The second sense is thermoception that lets us uh, feel uh, heat and cold, and which explains many things in our cities. For example, uh, the, in, in northern cities, uh, cold and wet weathers. Um, we have this idea of the house which has a thatched roof that needs uh, a space, free space around it in order to throw away water. That makes that we cannot um, attach houses like this, put them together. We couldn't in the ancient times because these roofs weren't able to throw the, the, the water to the neighbor. So we have to detach houses like this and that's why in, in in those uh, northern cities, we had too many isolated, detached uh, buildings and not uh, party walls, okay? Uh, that leads us today to a sprawling city with isolate, isolated homes, with gardens, which is a dream for many people, but which is completely uh, nonsense in terms of uh, energy and climate change. Whereas in the southern cities we had this shim which came from the need of uh, recollecting water in a central courtyard and that, and that made that this central patio, this central courtyard um, was the, made, made the way to uh, light and, and fresh air to come into the house so the surrounding facades could be party walls, blind party walls, and we could put houses together like this. So in southern cities we have scarcity of public space but it is a high quality public space uh, with a very intense use. That's the, the idea of the Kashba, for example, of the Arabic city or the Roman or the Greek one. So we need compact cities uh, and mixed up cities. This is a way to address the, the future. And these are, these are how they look like. We already knew how to make them, but we have uh, lost the art of making cities in this uh, 20th century. The, the third 
uh, sense is proprioception, which is uh, the sense of um, feeling, movement, uh, uh, direction, acceleration, and even uh, balance. Wh where are the different parts of our body? If we understand this uh, sense, not as an individual sense, but as a collective, uh, as a collective sense in our cities, uh, we could say that they are not at all uh, balanced. For example, when you have a car-based city, you don't uh, measure uh, distance in energy or uh, space units, but in uh, time units. So you create huge infrastructures that create uh, huge debt, um, and, and we are wasting lots of energy. Whereas, for example, here we, ha we are in the underground in Barcelona, where they are advertising a smart car, while a visitor of the Mobile World Congress is using the subway, the, the underground, because he knows that he will be able to check his mail uh, during the travel, during the trip. So uh, walking is a, a good way of, of moving. You can experience lots of things while, while you are doing so. And you have places where, uh, where walking uh, uh, through them uh, is really uh, amazing, interesting. And places, that's the seafront of Barcelona nowadays, where it's a completely boring. The same um, amount of time can be much more boring in some places than in others. And so in terms of balance and equilibrium, we need um, cities uh, which are complex and which are made of uh, simple architectures. And the opposite is, um, is, is very bad. It, it is a, a very simple city made of complex architectures. That's what we, are, we have been doing with uh, huge um, operations like this. Um, with uh, star architects' works that uh, have very complex shapes, but um, that are not uh, making a, a good city. Um, the fourth um, uh, sense is nociception, which is the, the ability of feeling pain. <clears throat> and uh, again, if we uh, understand this as a collective uh, sense, uh, we should be aware of what car is doing in our sitting. It's, it's killing lots of people, uh, but we are still advertising it in our streets uh, nowadays in Barcelona. So we should be uh, uh, making pedagogy uh, to, to people uh, to understand that there are much more sensible ways of moving around, like they do in Malmo, where they have replaced all uh, commercial adver adver advertising um, with uh, art installations like this. While in Barcelona we are um, having this kind of spaces which could be museums in, in the public transport uh, spaces, talking to people on how uh, vulnerability, vulnerabilities coming from cars are damaging people. This is how uh, our streets are uh, looking uh, where they are, when they are invaded by, car, by cars or what, how our urban fabrics are um, broken up by huge infrastructures of cars that don't let people uh, move around in sensible ways and that make poor people live in front of uh, huge infrastructures. And that's how the, a city uh, looks like when cars are not there and when people can share the space in terms of equity. And the thing is that these pedestrianized uh, neighborhoods we are creating in, in our urban uh, centers are paving the way to gentrification because uh, everybody wants to live in a free, in a car-free city. So we have to implement as well policies of, of uh, public housing. Um, the fifth uh, sense is famili familiarity, which lets us recognize uh, by means of memory uh, something that we have already uh, experienced before and differentiate it from, from novel. And mm, that's something that in our cities uh, mm, is not always able. Uh, we, are we have been creating architectures that are, uh, don't let people feel familiar in front of them while uh, we already knew how to uh, do the, the opposite. Uh, we are creating uh, huge works in, in the middle of our neighborhoods that avoid people uh, uh, f having the feeling of belonging to, to the place. And we are also creating um, big uh, shopping uh, malls that avoid this feeling of belonging as well. Um, 
while we uh, already knew how to uh, create uh, commercial spaces where in social interaction and knowing each other uh, is much more easy. And the last uh, sense is agency, uh, which is th something that, for example, schizophrenic people does not ever have, uh, that makes them feel like machines or like if they were driven by uh, anybody else. And agency is the, is the um, uh, faculty to feel like you have cho chosen what you have uh, done. So this is, uh, again, something that could be collectively, collectively, collectively uh, addressed. Uh, it's what we call um, participation or bottom-up or democracy. Uh, and it's what it, this is what uh, leads people mark public, public space uh, many, very, very often because they don't feel it. Uh, they, they don't um, know how to appropriate it, uh, so they want to feel it uh, like if it was their work, or how people appropriate the public space for domestic uses uh, in Raval neighborhood as well, or how the free of speech is important in, in public space in terms of agency to, in order to uh, let people feel at home when they are outside. Uh, how assemblies and participation spaces are important to, uh, to decide on uh, how, which kind of city uh, we want and some exercises uh, of how to uh, appropriate these streets by means of participation when cars are not uh, taking the, the streets. So um, the main problems cities uh, have today are only two, which are uh, coexistence and survival and uh, as, as, as an approach based on this kind of, se of senses could be a much more sensible city that could improve these two issues. Thank you.